How do you stop your house from burning down? Fire! How useful is seaweed? And how do you make an egg stand on its end? Make an egg stand on its end. Ridiculous. Like Even you can't make an egg stand no, on you, its end. You need something to help prop it up. Oh, Definitely. he needs something. No, right. no. <laughs> you can make an egg stand on its end. All you've got to do is shake the egg at first, take yeah. it really wild. What happens is all the yellow stuff in the egg falls to the bottom. The yolk, you mean? The yolk, that's the technical term, yes. And making it as about as stable as this um, duck egg here. So hopefully the egg. No, you should actually step up. Carol's right with her strong mathematical background when she says you need something upon which to balance it. She's always right on these sort of things, and salt is the answer. Oh, balance it on salt, yeah, and to give the impression good. that you've achieved the how, then yes. you blow the salt away. Comme ça. Ah, no, no, Fred. All you've got to do is, once you've shaken it, stand it up there, let go, and we'll stand no, it up. No, no, Tommy. Carol. No, you do need an extra little couple of things here. The weights at the bottom, bringing the centre of gravity down. And with this egg, I can, in fact, perform in a circus. That's very good. But yes. all you've got to do, really, is just crack the bottom, crack the bottom, and where the air pocket is, it'll stand up. And that's what I was going to do all along, honest. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Cheat. It's pathetic, isn't it? How can you make... A pop-up card. Pop-up. Here's a pop-up card. That's and rather beautiful. a beautiful yeah. one. Yeah. Did you make that, Fred? No. <laughs> <laughs> but here's how you can make a more simple pop-up card. It's quite pretty. It's very fair. good. Yeah, and, yes. and it does pop up, which is yes. what it's supposed to do. Do you yeah. agree with that? Yes. How do you make one of those? Well, obviously, years of skill and practice. But I can show you how to make a simple pop-up card from which you can begin. Simple piece of card. It'll fold in two so that it will become a card. I've got some lines across it, and then you need some strips of paper. All your strips are exactly the same length, mm -hmm. but you lay them at different heights across the card, hence my lines, different levels across the card, so they're not completely level. You're reaching across that fold. They're yeah? reaching across the fold, mm -hmm. nice and straight, OK? Yeah. So they're all the same size, but they're at different levels. Then fold them over so that they fold outwards, which they will want to do anyway, and let them find their own crease point. Uh -huh. And then when you open it, you would have made a very simple oh, pop-up card. Good. And from there, of course, you can add different colours, different yeah. layers, different levels, etc., and go on to build a whole new world of pop-up <laughs> cards. But of course, when you're me, this isn't enough. I have built the biggest pop-up card in the world, but will it pop up. Let's find out how. Huh. Hey. There it is. <laughs> the thing is, will it work? Here Whoa. it is. How much paper you got? 15 it? yards of cardboard, <laughs> three tons of paint, <laughs> but basically the principle is the same with your three main <laughs> strips. But everything built from those three main strips so that it all pops up beautifully and were it to be a talking card, it would <laughs> undoubtedly say, How? Now, how did Farmer Giles divide his flock? Farmer Giles had a flock of seven sheep, and he wanted to divide them up for his children. He wanted to give half of his flock to his oldest child, let's say you, Freddie. Then to his middle child, let's say me, he wanted to give a quarter of his flock. And to his youngest, he wanted to give one-eighth, let's say. That's you, Gareth. How did he do it? That's not going to work. Seven sheep, half to me, that's three and a half sheep. Yeah, you'd have to chop a sheep in half. You don't want to do, do that. that. Yeah, well, no. Farmer Giles had a solution. What he did was he went down the road and borrowed a sheep for the day from his friend Joe. Joe went off. And then he had eight in his flock. Yeah. So half of eight is... Four. four. Let's say those are for you, Freddie. Right. A quarter of eight is... Two. 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 They're for me. And one-eighth of eight is... One. 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 That's for Gareth. So he had one left, which he 
gave that to his friend Joe, but and everyone Carol, was happy. That's wrong yeah. because Fred's got four sheep now, and half of seven is three and a half, not four. And I've only got one. I'm supposed to have one. I mean, quarter. I'm happy with that, Toppy, but it's just not right. It's not it? fair. No, it's not fair. fair. There is something wrong here, but I can't work out what it is. No. Well, that hang on, four, two, and one. Yeah. Right, you've got a half and a quarter and an eighth. Doesn't add up to one. It adds up to ah, one less than eight. Ah, seven eighths. Seven Naughty eight. Farmer Giles. Yeah. Because that is how he pulled the wool over everybody's eyes. How did the old cowboy become the president of the United States of America? Well, to explain this how, I'm going to need the help of this lady, Veronica Lewis, from the Royal National Institute for Deaf People. Now, Veronica herself is deaf, but can lip read. Veronica, thank you for coming in. Now, um, Veronica's been watching me on the TV monitor there and reading my lips and translating that into a sign language for a how camera for you guys to see. Veronica, which sign language are you using? This is my language. So, what are the differences? What are the other languages? Oh, there's American, French, Island. Oh, as many languages oh, as there yeah. are. Okay, yeah. so um, give me an example of the kind of differences between British and American sign language. In British, we say the president of America. In America, they say the president I of see. America. I see, okay. Um, okay, teach me some more. Because, now, how does sign language work? Uh, well, 40% is based on picture. Uh-huh. Uh, for example, yeah. I tell you what, what's this? Rain. Right? Yeah. What's this? Cat? Yeah. This? A, a book? Of course. A, and a, a coat? Coat, that's ah. it. Yeah, it's just simple, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, not yeah. difficult. Okay, um, so um, how about how? Can you teach me how? Ah, uh, how. Oh, oh how? Right. How? Yeah. Not that. Oh, no. How? Now, okay. Now, um, uh, you better explain the grammar for me. Is it exactly the same as English? No, not in word for word, although the content of the language is the same, but we do it differently. Like, say, uh, we use, instead of saying, what's your name, we say, name what. I see. Do the way around. Okay. The answer to the how, then. How did the president of the USA become the old cowboy? Oh, easy, because going back years and years ago, all the films he was in, he was playing the role of a cowboy. And that's why he was named, sign name, Ronald Reagan, the old cowboy. So that's to save time, instead of spelling out Ronald Reagan... It's much easier to say the old cowboy. <laughs> Will you stay and sign the next how for us? Oh, yeah. Thank you very much indeed, Veronica. Now you know how the president of the USA became the old cowboy. That's how. How useful is seaweed? It's not very useful at all. You can't do much with seaweed. You think so? No, 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 actually, it's slightly useful because in Wales we have uh, something called lava bread and that's made out of seaweed. More than slightly useful, Gareth, when it comes to food. Lava bread you correctly mentioned, but there's also sushi. Made of seaweed, of mm. course, and absolutely delicious and nutritious. Seaweed in salads, all sorts of different kinds of salads made from seaweed. Seaweed soup, lovely soup, that is, made again from seaweed, dull soup with a little bit of seaweed seasoning. You see what I mean? Suddenly the whole food thing starts to build up. Yes. And if you move on, of course, it's better if you can buy your seaweed in packets like so, rather than going onto the beach to dig it up. Right, Carol, how do you like your jelly. Jelly, you go and buy it in the supermarket. Jelly, you, mix it you buy it in yes, cubes stuff, and all yeah. that sort of yeah. thing. How about carrageen? Seaweed again oh, makes no. absolutely like delicious like no, jelly. No, 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 no. I like, like crisps, peanuts, crunchy. You cri how about kelp crunches? Oh, well, there's much, much more. If you move on to toiletries, Ocean Gel Hair Styler, made from uh, seaweed. Very much for you, Toppy, I think. Thank you, Fred. Some delicious seaweed soap. What better for you, Carol? There you are. Thank you, Fred. Strong toothpaste. The toothpaste bound together. Buy seaweed, yes, Gareth. For you, just the thing you need. Yeah. What have we got here? Yeah. Seaweed shampoo. I'll need that, of course. <laughs> not a lot. Now, <laughs> how do you stop your But just, it would be remiss of me not to mention the first aid box, of course, because that is packed with things 
made from seaweed. Yeah. And I'll just get in there because yeah. this is absolutely fascinating. This is carrageen jelly made from uh, seaweed. That's and of course, amazing. that becomes a, a drink to soothe a sore throat. So really? we'll certainly need some of that. Oh, thanks, Fred. Ah, seaweed foot bath, Garrett. That's certainly the thing you need. Are you trying to tell me something? Ah, seaweed baths. What better? A lovely present for you, Carol. Wonderful. All made yes. from Thank seaweed. You, it's no. fascinating, isn't How it? Do you stop your but of course, gardeners should never forget that Fred. manure is also can be made from seaweed <laughs> and plant food as well <laughs> can be made yes. from so, seaweed. Food, so there we are. There we are, Jared. Okay. Gardening thing. Now, yes, but it doesn't do stop there stop? even, amazingly enough. Look at these bottles. Uh, bottles aren't made out of seaweed. No, if not. you burn seaweed, it's quite fascinating because you produce a soda from which you can make glass. Get away. Yes, true, isn't it? Absolutely fantastic. <laughs> now, of course, alginates are extracted from seaweed. And where would we be without alginates? Yeah, they turn up in all sorts of different things. For example, the transparent wrapping on bouquets of flowers. Yeah, All down know. to our friend seaweed. For you, I think, Carol. Yes, thank you so much. Then we move on to various paints. Seaweed in there in the form of alginates. Paint. Yes, indeed. Artificial silk and the paint that paints it. All right. Yes, wow. Licorice all sorts. No, must, definitely yes. Not. Without seaweed, they would be licorice any sorts. They <laughs> certainly would. <laughs> so what about that? Okay, that's great. And Bill. let's no. not forget the good old sausage, of course, because without no. seaweed, sausages would be skinless. So how useful is seaweed? The answer, very useful indeed. Well done, Fred. Thank you, Fred. Now. And one more thing. Shut up! Now, how do you stop your house from burning down? Well, house sets on fire, what do you do? Don't panic, that's the first thing you've got to remain. Very calm, very cool. Simply dial nine, nine, and another nine, and then wait for someone to answer and say, fire, 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 house on fire! <laughs> and then they will send a fire engine round, da 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 da, Lots of water, lots of foam, put the fire out and everything will be fine. Well, that's all right nowadays, but what happened before the time of the Great Fire of London in 1666? This is my beautiful cottage of which I'm so proud. Oh no! Fire! Fire! Can we help? Yes, I need buckets, lots of people and lots of water. Yes! Fire! Bucket! Bucket of water! Fire! Bucket of water! Bucket of water! Water. Excuse me? There's a hole in your bucket! <laughs> you see, what little firefighting equipment there was was very poorly looked after, and that's how things like this happen. It's now 1666, and I've rebuilt my beautiful cottage, but I can see the Great Fire of London raging away in the distance. It's been going on for days and days, but I know I'm perfect. Right, oh, that's barrels down here, please, madam. If you could just sign well, there, please. We're yeah. just about to blow yeah. your house up, madam. Okay, with the designator top it. Let it go. Why did they blow up my lovely house? Well, the firefighting equipment still wasn't very good, even in 1666, and so they had to create a fire break blow up houses so they could stop the fire from spreading from one house to the next, to the next, to the next, and so on. But still, look at this. Oh, no. Well, I've built my cottage again, but the Great Fire of London changed everything. Insurance companies were set up so that people could insure their houses against fire. The insurance companies paid firemen, and so that the firemen knew which houses were insured, you were given one of these. This is called a fire mark, and there was a different one for each insurance company. And because I love my little house so much, I thought I would insure it with the very best insurance company around. So I'll just put my fire mark up on the wall here, just in case anything happens. Now, the insurance companies paid the firemen on a particular rate. The first fireman to turn up at the fire would get a bonus, whether he put the fire out or not. That could have caused problems. Oh, well. Oh, no! Fire! All oh, right, come on, lads, bring it in. Oh, 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 come on, lads. OK, I... just a minute. My lads here at first. It's it's Red Firefighting yeah. Services. Yeah. Oh, you are. Don't you stop, mate. Away with you, both of you. 
And that was the situation until the insurance companies decided to put all of their money together to pay one single fire brigade. No more arguments. And that was how our fire brigade today began. Carol, yes, we we'll have to go now. Don't you dare. Don't you dare. Hey, lovely, that's it. <laughs> lovely. That's the house out. Lovely. And that's how you can stop your house from being blown down. And that's how we go. You never liked that house, did you? <laughs>